Hello, everybody. Hi, guys. Happy Friday. Yay, Thomas, you are always on time to live videos. Happy Friday, Mr. Thomas. Thanks for being here, Thomas. I appreciate um, your consistency in just every single live video. You're always there. Yay, happy Friday, you guys. I miss you all so much. Katie S, hello, hello. Hi, Mr. Tim. You guys rock. Happy Friday. I'm going to wait for a few more people to join and then we can get started. But what has been the best part of your guys' week this week? Was it working out with Jesse and Olivia and Daniel today? That was a lot of fun. Or have you been enjoying Lauren's morning updates? Those have been great. What has been the best part of your week so far? My favorite part of the week has been just enjoying this beautiful weather. I've been outside a lot. I do a lot of my work here on my back patio. So it's been really great weather. <gasps> Josh, hi Josh. I'm glad you're watching. Thomas, you have been really great at joining the videos. Hi Lyndon. Hi Richie. You guys have been working out. That's been your favorite part this week. Has anyone um, done any outdoor activities this week? The parks are opening back up, I believe. So whether you're riding your bikes or going on a walk, have you guys been enjoying this weather? Olivia's loved the weather this week. Ooh, Ryan liked cooking with Rada. She has made some really yummy meals. I've been watching those too. Sweet. Well, I am so thankful to get to do the devotional with you guys this Friday. Um, I've been loving watching Foster's devotionals. Has anyone been watching Foster's devos? He's been doing a really fantastic job. Jamie's favorite part has been catching up with all the hipsters and staff. Mm -hmm. One of my really favorite things about what's going on right now is that we get technology and we get to connect with people through Facebook and through FaceTime and House Party and all those fun apps where we get to keep up with our friends who we don't get to always see. So I agree with you, Jamie, catching up with staff. Hey, Ryan. Hey, Tim. Sweet. Well, I'm thankful to get to do the devotional with you guys today. Um, what a great way to end a week, right? It's Friday, the weather is beautiful, and we got we get to read God's word together. So it's going to be so much fun. Um, I'm not sure if you guys could see the title, but we're going to be reading out of Matthew 6 today, specifically Matthew chapter 6, verses 25 through 24. So if you're watching this, go and grab a Bible or a lot of phones have Bible apps, or you can even look up right there on your computer, Matthew 6, 25 through 34, so that you can follow along and we can um, study this word together today. So I'm gonna give you guys a couple minutes to go grab your Bibles and get to Matthew verse six so that we can begin today. Hi, Ava. Hello, Miss Rebecca. This is so great getting to connect with what has been the highlight of your week that's the question right now that we're talking about thomas has his bible ready to go awesome thomas what was the highlight of your week ava hi hello shelby sweet 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 Okay, so we're going to go ahead and open up in prayer so you guys can bow your head with me 
or if you don't want to, that's okay. You can pray wherever you want and however you want. So I'm going to go ahead and open up in prayer. Um, dear Lord, I just thank you so much for just another beautiful day and um, getting to spend time in your creation has been so sweet. I thank you for the beautiful weather that you've blessed us with. But more importantly, I thank you for um, the ability to just read your word um, and share it with these hipsters today, Lord. I pray that your um, hand is just over this um, meeting time, Lord, and that you are so, so, so evident in all of our hearts, Lord. I pray that your word can just um, break into our hearts and that we can learn more about you today. Um, I pray that each and every single hipster and friend or family member watching, Lord, that they just feel loved by you, Lord, and that um, your hand of protection and guidance is peace is over them. Um, I thank you so much for technology and the ability to share your word um, over technology and just to connect us, Lord. Um, I thank you again for this beautiful day and um, these amazing hipsters who I get to talk to today. I pray that um, your truth is just so evident, Lord, and that um, we just feel refreshed and ready for an amazing weekend after learning more about you today. I thank you again for this opportunity. In your name we pray. Amen. All right. Thank you for praying with me. So if you have a Bible or if you have something that you can access the Bible on, we're going to be on Matthew 6, Matthew chapter 6. So Matthew is the very, I'm going to show you guys, the very first book of the New Testament. So quick way to find it is you go to the New Testament and then go up to your first page and that's going to be Matthew. So we're going to go to Matthew chapter 6. And I think that this title of this chapter is just so, so, so powerful. It's so simple, but it's so powerful. It's titled, Do Not Be Anxious. And I can tell you that I definitely feel anxious. Sometimes. Do you guys ever feel anxious about anything? What are some things that we can sometimes feel anxious about in our lives. Our lives look a little bit different right now, don't they? We're at home more, we're with our family more. We don't get to see our friends that often, which is okay. There's seasons for everything. But what are some things that maybe have been making us anxious lately? I would say that for me, something that's been making me anxious has um, been my school. My classes have been very, very stressful lately. A lot of homework and a lot of tests, and that's okay. But it's been a little bit anxious. Thomas is anxious because the movie theaters are closed. That is hard, especially if you like to go and relax and enjoy movies there. And you can't do the things that you love right now. So we gotta find new things to do. What are some other things that may cause us to be a little bit anxious during this time? Olivia is anxious because she can't see her family all the time. I agree with you 100%, Miss Olivia. It's really hard when you have so many people that you love, so many friends and family, but not being able to see them as frequently is difficult. Hi, David. Thanks for joining. Yes, that's definitely something to be anxious about, Olivia. And these are okay. It's good to talk about the things that are making us anxious because we're going to learn we're going to read today how God tells us that we do not need to be anxious about these things. There's so many things in life um, that we find ourselves getting anxious about, but we're going to learn that he provides so much peace during this time. Yes, Jamie, fear of the unknown. That one too is pretty big in my life as well. Okay, so what we're going to do, I'm going to just read verse by verse. And we're going to break it down together. We're going to see what God is saying in these specific passages. And um, we're going to apply them to our hearts and how we can use them to fight the anxieties that we're dealing with during this time. So I'm going to start with verse 25. Therefore, I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body and clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They never sow, nor reap, nor gather into barns. And yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not one more value than they? 
So at the very beginning, right, he lists out things that people are anxious about. Even to this day, people are anxious about what will I eat? What will I eat for dinner? What will I have tomorrow? What if I can't go to the grocery store? What will I drink? Or it says, don't be anxious about your body. Um, people sometimes can get anxious about wanting to lose a lot of weight. Losing weight is okay, but worrying about it a lot is where it becomes a negative thing. People worry about what they will put on. What will I wear tomorrow? What will I wear next week? And it's so funny that we're stuck in our homes right now. We don't have to worry about what we're gonna wear. We just pretty much wake up, put whatever is comfortable on, and then we get our day started. So I think it's really fun to look at this verse in this time in our lives because um, things that used to make us anxious may not be making us anxious just now. Um, it says, is life not more than food and the body more than clothing? So basically it's saying there is so much more, more important things in life than worrying about what will I eat tomorrow or what will I wear tomorrow? Granted, these are real worries for people who um, may not have these resources or may not have access to these resources. And we are so blessed to have um, food in our pantry and clothes in our closet. Um, but the Lord is reminding us here that he provides for us regardless of what we have. All right. So let's look into 26. Look at the birds of the air. Let's just stop here. And let's think about the birds in the air. Think about the last bird that you saw. Did it look did it look worried? Did it look anxious? Did it look like it was just flying around really happy? Think about the birds in the air. It says, they neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns. So that means that even the birds don't worry about where their food is going to come from. They trust that their needs are going to get met. They find their food as they go. They don't worry about storing up food um, or reaping or doing all this hard work to find their food. They're so carefree and the Lord provides for even the birds that are so small. We're gonna keep going. And yet your heavenly father feeds them. So that's what I was saying. The birds who are so small and we just see every single day without even thinking about the Lord cares so much about tiny birds that of course he's going to care about us every single day. Olivia, yes, we will go back to him soon. We just don't know when. That's a really good point. Just don't give up hope. Thank you for encouraging your friends right there. So we're going to keep going. Um, verse 27. And which of you, by being anxious, can add a single hour to his lifespan? So this verse is basically saying, can we add any time to our life by worrying? What do we think? Can we add any time to our life by worrying? What do we think? Kim said, yay, birds. <laughs> so right here, the scripture is saying, you cannot add any time to your life by worrying. By spending time sitting and worrying, crying and being upset about the things that we have, it's not, it's not benefiting our lives when we're not trusting that the Lord will provide. We're going to continue to verse 28. And why are you anxious about living? This is one of my favorite parts right here. It says, Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, they neither toil nor spin. So this part where it says, consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, they neither toil nor spin. So I want you to think of the most beautiful flowers you've ever seen, whether it's a rose bush or here are the lilies. If you've ever seen a field of lilies, they're so colorful. They're so beautiful to look at. And if you look at them up close, they have so much detail to them. But they're tiny, right? We go every single day walking by flowers, walking by really beautiful things that God created. I'm thinking twice about them. But it says here, 
that consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, they neither toil nor spin. Texas blue bonnets, those are beautiful. And I love that the Lord created those for us. Um, but do they work? Do they work to get that beautiful? Do they spend all day trying to make their petals beautiful? They spend all day trying to get bright. How do they become that beautiful? It says they neither toil or spin. How do they become that beautiful? And I'm loving your comments right now, you guys. And blue bonnets are a great example. So the lilies and the flowers, they neither toil nor spin. They do absolutely no work to become that beautiful. And I think it's so cool that God cares enough about us and about the flowers to get their needs met to make sure that they have sun and water to grow so that we can enjoy their beauty we're going to move on to verse 29 yet i tell you even solomon in all of his glory was not arrayed like one of these but if god so loves the grass of the field which today is alive and tomorrow is thrown into the oven he will not much clothe you, you of little faith. So this part's a lot. I'm going to read it one more time a little slower. It says, yet I tell you, even Solomon in all of his glory. So really quick, Solomon was the wisest man. Yes, Kim. Amen. He did make us beautiful. So Solomon was the wisest man that God ever made. And it says that even Solomon. The man who had everything and was so wise, all of his glory was not arrayed as beautiful as one of those flowers. So God cares so much, even about tiny flowers, but of course he cares about making sure that you are provided for. Um, it says, it, and then it goes on to talk about the grass. I'm looking at grass right here. And it seems so silly and so simple, but it says, God clothes the grass of the field which today is alive and tomorrow is thrown into the oven. Will he not much more clothe you, O you of faith? So going even more into detail, God cares about every single blade of grass. I'm telling you right now, every single day, those mowers come by and they mow down that grass. It does not last here forever. Um, the grass is not forever. It says it's here today and gone tomorrow. But he cares so much about even the grass that, of course, he's going to care enough to clothe you. Moving on to 31, it says, therefore, do not be anxious, saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink or what shall we wear? For the Gentiles seek after all these things and your heavenly father knows that you need them all. It says your heavenly father knows that you need them all. What are some things that we need every single day? Some things that I need every single day are um, just food and water and sunshine and um, time to just read my Bible and talk to the Lord and talk to friends and family members. I need that time. And it says here that you don't need to worry about that stuff every day because God knows before you even think about, before you even think about it, but God knows that it's stuff that you need and it's stuff that he is a father who provides for us and um, he will provide that stuff for us. If you think about your moms and your dads, growing up, they provided for you, right? They made sure that you had milk when you were a baby. They made sure that you had food growing up or a Band-Aid whenever you fell and scraped your knee. But if you think about our heavenly father, how he knows what you need before you even know it, I just think that is so incredible and how amazing he can provide for us. Um, we're going to keep going to 33. And this is a really cool command that we get um, in this chapter because it tells you that above all else, um, that's the most important thing to seek. And we're going to read about it. It says, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you. I love this because above all else, above everything that we worry about, whether it's missing our friends at MP or missing our family who um, live in another town, above 
aus. We should be seeking first the kingdom of God, going to him first, going to him in prayer and um, trusting that he's going to provide these things for us, seeking his righteousness. And it says, all these things will be added to you. I think that is such a freeing part of this chapter um, that all we need to do is just go to him and trust that he will provide and um, and just seek to seek to go to him every single day. Um, Verse 34 says, therefore, do not be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. I'm going to read that one more time for you guys. Therefore, do not be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. So, Yes, tomorrow is Saturday, and you have plans for tomorrow, or you may have laundry you need to do tomorrow, or you may be thinking about what you're going to have for breakfast tomorrow. But this verse is saying right here, do not even think about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Everything that is in the back of your mind of, oh, I have homework to do next week, or I have to clean up the living room tomorrow, guess what? Tomorrow will deal about tomorrow. And today, the Lord just is calling us to live in the moment and to seek his righteousness today and to trust that he provides for everything today. Um, I find it so easy to get caught up in what I'm doing tomorrow or the next day or next week and meetings and everything. But I think this verse is so, so, so comforting to me that it says we do not need to be anxious about tomorrow. For tomorrow will be anxious for itself. And sufficient for today is its own problem. So it's saying that basically everything, everything that's bothering us about next week and when will we go back to MP, it's okay to worry about those things, but stay in today. Trust in the Lord's provision today, um, and he will walk with you through that. So I think a really sweet activity that we can do, something that's super simple that um, – has given me a lot of peace is I write verses for the week and I just put on a little sticky note and then I put it on my mirror so that every single day I can see it and it can be a reminder um, that the Lord is providing for me for that week and that day. And then when you see it every day, you can repeat it and you can read it out loud and you can just put it in your heart and then your memory. And that'll help you remember that, um, that God is just with you every single day through everything. So if you're looking for a verse to write on a sticky note to put on your mirror this week, I would highly recommend that you put um, Matthew 6, 34. I'm going to read it one more time for you guys because it really wraps up the purpose of why we shouldn't be anxious and why we should trust in the Lord um, with his daily provisions. So one more time, this would be a really good verse to write on a sticky note, to put on your mirror, to put in your bedroom, and to just read it every day and to remind yourself that God provides. Here it is. Therefore, do not be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. So go ahead and write that verse on a sticky note, put it on your mirror, put it in your room, put it in your family room, put it somewhere where you're going to look at it every day and remember that God provides for us every single day. And Next time you're looking at the birds in the sky or you pass by a lily field or if you even see this grass over here, think about how God cares so much about those tiny creatures and those tiny things that you know and you can trust fully that he will provide for you as well. That's what I have for you guys today. And I'm really thankful that I got to do this with you all. Um, I like Jeffrey's. I'm going to have to read it, you guys, because it kind of tied into the verse that we read today. It says Philippians 4, 4 through 8. There's another passage about do not be anxious. So I'm going to flip to it, Mr. Jeffrey, and we can read that one together as well. And then I will let you go. Enjoy your weekend. And enjoy the outdoors, please. Enjoy all of the amazing things that God created for us to enjoy. What am I looking for? Philippians 
Oh, Philippians 4, 4 through 8. All right. Are we ready? Philippians 4, 4 through 8. It says, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your reasonableness be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. That's all I have for you guys today. Thank you, Jeffrey, for that verse to close us out on. It's a really sweet way to wrap up um, the devotional for this Friday. Thank you for listening. And I hope that you guys have a really great weekend. And I'll see you guys later. Bye. Thanks for watching.